Hi everybody, it's Brandon and Josh. And before we start today's episode, we just want to give a little plug. Give us a like or subscribe to this channel and follow us on Instagram for all of your daily drama and art needs. Woohoo, check back every week for more content from yours truly. And hope you enjoy the episode. Ciao. Until we get another theme song, this will have to do. These are your blues reviews. Hi everybody, it's your boys Brandon and Josh. And we are here with another episode of what we're gonna try to call Booze Reviews. Amen. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers to that. I'll drink to that. We, I mean, you like wine, I know that, but I like any kind of booze and anything else that'll make you feel wet and loose. I like booze. <laughs> Get your tongue loose. Ah. So, we are here today, oh, I have to say, you look great in your bow tie. Oh, well, thank you. You look very masculine, you know, or maybe that's a subliminal message that I'm supposed to think you look masculine, even the pink. Well... This, right? I said I was going to do tank tops. The titties are telling stories. <laughs> and I'm boozed up enough to let my tongue loose to tell another. <laughs> well, hopefully, we'll see what happens in, in this episode. Because we are doing our Valentine's Day episode. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's the season of love and romance. And death and stalkers and... Uh... Happy fucking Valentine's Day. Speaking of which, we're going to be doing down. down. Down? Okay. Well, that's an interesting take on Valentine's Day. But this is a film that we saw from Hulu's Into the Dark series. Yeah, which, the second one we've seen, about the fourth or fifth one they have out. Well, it's the second one you've seen. I, for, for anyone that doesn't know, Hulu is, I think, I, I'm, I'm loving what they're doing. So innovative. They're doing a sort of movie series they call them episodes, but they're full, like, they're over They're now. long movies. They're long well, feature film. not really long movies, but they're, yeah. Yeah, they're feature film length. Yeah. But um, each one is a sort of a horror thriller set on or around a holiday of the month. Yes. So we watched the first one together, which was... Halloween. Halloween, The Body, the and that was yes. really good. We may go back. Well, it was, yeah, it was good. It was, it was interesting. It was different. So maybe we should go back and review that one. It sounds like we have a difference of opinion on that. Oh, there you go. New episode. Um, but this one, they also have one, uh, before we get to this one, so they also have Halloween, they have Thanksgiving, yep. they have Christmas, Christmas, they have New, New Year's, Year's, and now this is Valentine's. Yep. And we saw the trailer for March. For, I'm supposing it's St. Patty's Day. Arr, I didn't see down. anything in the trailer about St. Patty's Day. But, <laughs> and, uh... Apparently it's about pirates. Who knew? Arr. <laughs> but don't think I didn't catch that. I, was, uh, uh, I might have had something to say, but I got ears too. Bitch. I was hoping that the booze was going to cover out. that. I'm, I'm coming for you. I was hoping the booze was going to cover that. So, anyway, this one down is the Valentine's Day. So that's why we've got our pink on. We've got some roses here. Never mind. Only two notes, because it's copyright. Oh, yeah. <laughs> A flat and D. I'm going... That's it. So <laughs> let's get to the review. Let's get to the review here. So we've got Down, and this was directed by Daniel Stam. Mm -hmm. Or Stom. I'm not too sure how you pronounce him. But uh, he has done some television directing before he did Fear the Walking Dead. He did Screen the Series on MTV. And one of the movies, it's funny that I, in my research for this, he did The Last Exorcism, which we did see. We did. No, um, it was it was in 2010, so it was a while ago. Oh, well, yeah, I'm guessing that was about an exorcism. Maybe even the last one? Oddly enough, it wasn't the last one. Oh. There's the last exorcism too, oh, which is like God. false advertise, you know. The last exorcism, the last lastest. The last laster. The final last exorcism. Jeez. Talk about running out of ideas. Is Hollywood getting dumber or just less and less ideas coming? A little bit about it. <laughs> but, um, so, directed by by uh, Daniel Sam, written by Kent Covina, and starring Matt Loria, who was in a couple of things. He was in 30 Rock, he was in Friday Night Lights, he had a big role in that, and he was in Kingdom with uh, Nick Jonas. That was, the, yeah, that was the one where Nick Jonas played the 
gay but closeted mixed martial arts fighter and that was the one where everyone was like oh he's gonna have a gay scene and we all tuned in just for that and it was hot i didn't but see that movie i guess what's on my next it's a series Oh, whatever. So he has a couple. He's a couple. For a couple you. gay scenes? Or yeah, a couple, couple okay, gay right. scenes. Which, you know, I don't know how I feel about that. Because Nick, it's okay if you're straight and you play gay. But I always felt like Nick Jonas was gay baiting. That, you know, he was, he knew what? the gays. Like, he would go out to gay clubs to promote his albums. He would lift up the shirt, show the abs. Oh, of course. He knows where his target market is. Let me ask this, though. Is he pitching or catching in these scenes? <laughs> Are you ready for a speedball, my little plumpkin pumpkin? I think he's fully versatile. Oh my goodness, there you go. Mm. But he's mask for mask, so... Apparently. Me over it. Anyway, um, and then also, that was Matt Gloria, and... I love how gay you are when you say that. <laughs> I have some mask, you guys. So oh he's gonna God. choose me. Mask for mask. Because I have the tank stuff on. Oh, <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It all matters what you look like. All right, so we're back anyway, right anyway, 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 okay, got Nat- this Loria guy, Lauria. Okay, Natalie Martinez yeah. plays the female lead. Uh-huh. She is a model, and she's a spoke model for J Lo by Jennifer Lopez. So we've seen her. Right. We, she's in a couple of music videos. Mark Anthony Pitbull on the um, television side. She was on CSI. She was in a movie Death Race. She actually was with Matt in Kingdom. So we've got oh, a reunion cool. here, right. and I think that works because they yeah. had chemistry in this movie. They had chemistry. I've never seen that grow in my life. I'm sure I probably have in something, but uh, saw her tonight. I can tell this uh, This is going to be a little different. You were a little more leader on Rent Live. Oh, yeah. I guess I'm going to have to be the leader today because it's Same not way. necessary. To come By the way, if you haven't seen it, check out our episode on Rent Live. Oh, yeah. If you haven't it. seen it or heard it in the podcast form, um, Definitely check out Rent Live. Uh, it's our first episode, and let us know what you think about that. And if you're liking that one, and you'll, you'll definitely like this one, so you should subscribe. Now, we got that out of the way. Anyway, so let's get to it. Let's get to it. All right. Dan, so, kick us off. Very cool, very cool premise. I like, I like what's going on. Mm-hmm. The, 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 the screenwriting is very basic. I mean, the whole plot and the whole premise of the movie is is really cool because they can tie it up and put it in a neat little box. Um, we start with these two people that are working in an office building, right? Yeah. It's getting ready to go into a long weekend. It's Valentine's Day slash, what, like President's Day or something. So they yeah, that, a, was, that was really weird. Yeah. So well, and convenient. And convenient, all right? Yeah. And so and maybe that's this year. We should check that out. Is that on the calendar? Is it a four-day weekend this year? But, oh, yeah, uh, that's coming up. Yeah, that Valentine's Day's right around the corner. And at the time so... Of this moment, yeah. What happens is this girl is um, getting ready to text what appears to be her ex, right, about coming to New York to see him, and mm-hmm. she misses us, and she really wants to see him, and uh, she's going back and forth whether she should send it or not, mm-hmm. and she doesn't send it, she gets her flight itinerary, so we see she's going, and she gets, in, and then you see this uh, young man that's like getting ready for uh, a hot date, apparently, and he's getting, he's in the okay. restroom and getting all... All dolled up. And, and they're the last people in this office. And they're the last late, people. It's late at night. It's late. We don't see anything else going hours. on. And then, uh, and then all of a sudden, we are into this elevator, and we're going on to have our fun weekend away. Mm-hmm. And the girl's coming down, and the floor stops, and here comes this guy. And, of course, he's dicking on his phone like all guys do and almost missed the elevator. And he's like, hold he it. almost misses the yeah. elevator. Almost Isn't that the craziest part? Yeah. He almost misses. Yeah. She, um, you know, I thought instantly, and I was like, when that happened, when he was like, hold, hold the elevator, I was like, no, I'm getting, I'm that type of person, and so, spoiler to the people out there, I'm the type of person, yeah, I'm holding it, and I'm slowly hitting close. You are Because kind of <laughs> if I could have the elevator to myself and have that, oof, you can catch the next one. And I don't need you on my elevator. And that building was n- not small either. How many floors were they on at the beginning? She was on the 49th floor, and he was on the 42nd. And then they had they had a parking garage basement that went all the way down from P1 to P8. At least to P8, yeah, because he was like... He was on the eight. dungeon. So I don't know what mega skyscraper they were working yeah. in. 
it's not too bad, I guess. Yeah, the problem I have is that we get trapped in the elevator. Am I skipping ahead too far? We get trapped no. in the elevator, and the whole premise of the movie is set up on that they're going to be stuck in this elevator. Oh my god, nobody's going to see us. Over Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, Day President's Day, and the long weekend. In four days, we're going to be stuck in this elevator together. All the way to Tuesday. Looking forward to the long weekend. Valentine's Day and President's Day? How often do you get that? It's like the perfect storm, right? Now, you just told me that it had like 60-some floors and eight levels of parking garages. Yeah. You know, I worked in business for a while. I worked in a three, four-story building in South Park at Charlotte, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. That building was just full of small, you know, small businesses, whatever, sometimes stockbrokers, lawyers, researchers, different types of... And there was no four-day weekend. Someone was always in the building working. They had access. Yeah. They had their key card. They had this and that. So you're telling me... That this premise is four days in a sixty-some floor building in a major city, mm -hmm. and no, and it's abandoned. Nobody's coming in. Well, well, they do address that, so we'll get there. We'll get All to right. that. Um, but they do address, they do address that, and I remember thinking, oh, okay, when they finally do address it later in the movie, I'm like, mm, that's still a little shady, but at least you thought about it. Okay, but we'll get there. So, um, they are so, like we said. Uh, they're in the elevator. The, the, the first thing is when they, they're in the elevator, they're not really talking to each other until he, the guy, who, spoiler alert, I, it's not really a spoiler, but whose name is Guy, yeah. which is Han. Okay. The guy whose name the, is Guy. The guy who is Guy. Like um, the Chico, whose name is Chico. <laughs> <laughs> That's a whole other thing. Um, <laughs> the guy, he points out a, like an etching, like someone etch or took like a knife or something and carved something into the elevator wall. Yeah. And it's a stick figure man clawing at the side of a box. He's like trapped in a box. Yeah. And creepy, you know, I'm just thinking that's foreshadow. Okay, well that they're going to be trapped and that's foreshadowing. Surprise, surprise. Well, it is in some way. Um, so <laughs> he, he like points it out to her and she's like, okay, whatever. She's not really featuring him. She's, he's not, she's not paying attention. And it's, once while she's looking at it, then the elevator just suddenly breaks down and stops. Complete stop. And so they're in there and it breaks down. She's starting to freak out as you would. He's actually remaining calm, which I thought was good because yep. you, know, you always need one person to be calm. No, I thought they were both pretty calm, honestly. She was like, angry. She was angry. She was like, uh, oh, you know, and then as the time starts to tick forward, she's going, she's getting more and more upset that she's missing her flight. Yeah. yeah. But you know, overall, I think they were pretty chill about it. Mm -hmm. Obviously, neither one of them had claustrophobia. Otherwise, it would have been a whole Boy, different movie. Would that suck? Yeah, I would like to see that. Movie. I would not want to. I would not want to be trapped in an elevator with someone with claustrophobia. Well, no, but I, but speaking of a different movie, I'd like to see that. Yeah, like somebody just freaking out in an elevator. Like even in movies like Barry with Ryan Reynolds, he doesn't freak out. Like, what if you were in, in that movie with claustrophobia? Yeah. That would be something. Anyway. Um, so they, they, they hold it together. They're yeah. like, they're like kicking it. They're, they're both, uh, going on their Valentine day weekend. Uh, the man has a bottle of wine and some cigars for a client that he landed a deal. Mm -hmm. And the girl has a gift bag full of like a nice shirt and some stuff mm -hmm. because she's getting ready to go to New York to, Try to get back with his ex-boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And um, after they get trapped in the elevator, he's like, well, screw it. Let's uh, let's drink the wine. And... Well, you're skipping ahead just a little okay. bit. So initially, he tries to make conversation with her. As you would. You're trapped in the elevator with somebody. You, you got to wait. You're, they try to call the thing on the box. And um, no one's answering. They don't think any of the security guards are waiting for the camera. Maybe the guards at the front desk we'll see that somebody should be there and no one's responding and so he tries to you know talk to her to try to liven it up or pass the time and she seems very standoffish at first yeah she's like because he says he makes a joke he's like fancy running do you or do you come here often and she i mean it's like no don't ask me things like that that usually comes with trying to buy me a drink and trying to hit on me or something like that so she's very guarded yeah at first. i don't even remember that so that, but that's important Apparently that was pretty subtle that, 
it's important. But the, we'll we'll yeah. talk about it, but we'll, that's actually pretty important that she is guarded yeah. at first because then there's that as we go along and the more and more they're in the elevator. Yes. Remember she. At first, they're like, okay, he offers her water, and she's like, I don't want to drink it. He's like, it's either this or the wine. So she takes the water. Well, hell yeah. I mean, is that a question? Well, you would have taken the wine right away and probably been married to the guy four minutes in if he had the wine. He had the wine, and he was looking pretty fresh. <laughs> he, he was. I mean, for a white guy, I'm not usually into white guys, but he's a good-looking guy. Why do you always have to go there? You know, I... He, there's, there's this whole thing about, like, the guy. Guy. Guy, okay. A guy, guy the guy. guy. He's a pretty attractive guy. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Guy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he... He gives you the idea of, like, sort of boy-next-door look. Mm-hmm. Short, blonde hair, beautiful blue eyes, mm-hmm. well-dressed. He's coming down from the top floors of the business. And you get the sense that if you watch movies, there's something wrong with them. Like, stalker, crazy, psychotic, you see something. But they make it look like guy next door, like cute little boy, like innocent talking to this girl. But the whole time this is going on, I'm thinking, did he plan this shit? Well... I don't think, I don't think he necessarily did that. Uh, well, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get that necessarily. I just, okay, so th- maybe I didn't get that feeling because this reminded me a lot of the movie Devil, which wasn't directed by Shyamalan, but was written by Shyamalan and had a weird, also starred a bunch of people trapped in an elevator and... It was a horror movie, so it was putting me in that sort of mind space. I was like, okay, what's the twist? Like, is, is like, one of the security guards downstairs playing a game on them? Or are they going to turn on each other in order to claw their way out and survive? Yeah. That's where I was thinking. And maybe with you not remembering that movie or not seeing that movie, maybe that's, you picked up on something else that I didn't think. All right, so, uh, so what happens? Where are we? So we are at the part, she's guarded, but she drank the water. They didn't get into the wine yet. The reason why I remember that is because there's that scene where she has to pee. Yeah. Yes. And she's trying to hold it because she's like, no, I don't, you know, ladies, ladies have a different way of peeing. Guys, it's a lot easier for us to just whip it out and go anywhere. Um, <laughs> as you do. Mm-hmm. So she's like, ugh, how am I going to do this? And he tells her, he's like, no, it's natural. You know, we're, we don't know how long we're going to be. Yeah, he's very there. sweet, perfect gentleman. He was like, here's my coat, pee on my yeah. coat in the corner. Um, he told her to pee on it. Isn't that love? I mean, if that's not love, that's very sweet. pee on my coat. Right? And then she obviously was like, oh, no, this is weird. And she was pee-pee shy and didn't want to. Mm-hmm. And uh, they finally talk about getting the thermos and peeing in the thermos. So I think that was the beginning of her like letting down her guard. Yeah. She knew he like okay he he's and not the whole that time bad. he's doing it. He's like looking away and like he's, he's playing like, make make t- sounds. I don't want to pee in front of anybody. He's playing every right move. Yep. He is playing it calm and cool. Where right? would you have peed? On his coat, like he asked me to. Just like a cat in heat, but it should have peed right on that coat. <laughs> well, <laughs> I mean, he has and he yeah, offered. Uh-huh. How often do you get to pee on a coat in an elevator? I mean, I did it just last week, but that's another podcast. Because you were nasty. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, yeah. so her guard's down, and she's like, all right, this guy's kind of sweet. He's, uh... And then... She finally tells him her name. They had to exchange yeah. names. And they, well, they're in here for a long time. They're in here for hours. And hours, maybe a day. We don't know. Time sort of stands still when you're in a 60-plus floor building and no one wants to go to work all weekend. Right. Uh, and so they're... They're bonding. They're, they're they're having fun. They're about the same age. They're both uh, young, good-looking execs, business people, with uh, plans for Valentine's Day. And then the the question comes, 
Oh yeah, they get the line. Yeah, we give them too much plot. People watching this already seen the plot. They probably want to. We know assume what if you're coming here, you're not gonna watch this or listen to this. Friends first. like, don't forget they open the line. <laughs> they both had corkscrews. <laughs> My, <laughs> right, that's my kind of people. I'm like, that's <laughs> important. They both bonded over the fact that they had hidden corkscrews yeah. just in case they wanted to drink. Hell, you would have been right there with them. Oh yeah, never leave house without one. I don't. I don't care that much, but y'all would have had a good time. I got one in my shoe right now. <laughs> just kidding, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> so they they drink the wine. They yeah. haven't. They happy. And we were talking about it earlier. Like, if he was a real creeper, right? Wouldn't he have just roofied the wine or something? Or... That's what I thought was going to happen. I don't know why. I didn't suspect him as being a creeper, but when he opened the wine and it was like, you first, or ladies, ladies first. Well, he didn't do quite like He was like, ladies, ladies first. first. He was very sweet and charming. Pour it down your no. I thought he... Okay, this is just vodka now. I ran out of the red stuff to make a Valentine's Day thing. Cheers. Um, okay. Uh, <laughs> that's what we do. That's what we do. On booze reviews. Booze reviews. I think I like that. Yeah. Maybe it'll stay. Uh, mm. So, they're bonding, they whatever, okay, yeah, we can fast forward a little bit, because we see, and so, like, no one's coming. We've gone all of Friday, we've yeah. gotten through Friday night, I think we've gotten through Saturday or something. I don't know, who knows, they don't even, I, you would have to really analyze this movie to figure out, but the point is, they ran for a long time. Long they, time. And the guards come down. And young people, bodily functions kick in. Well, thirst and alcohol. Want, want okay, to hold on. Let's talk because there's a setup that leads to that, and that is that part is is important. So they're like trying to figure out activities to pass the time, mm -hmm. and so she gets this idea that she's gonna take out her cell phone and she's gonna record um, herself telling her wildest sex story. Is this something that girls do when they're bored? Ladies. Sound off. I don't give, know. Give exactly. us a comment. Give us if, if you tell me your wild sex story. Where's the craziest place you can? Well, it's the one time at the Girl Scout Jamboree. <laughs> Becca and I. Um. Oh Lord. Okay. <laughs> write me the letters. That's fine. You don't have to write him. I mean, letters. I did have some crazy stories about Boy Scouts, but that was another time in another we place. We are gonna move on from <laughs> that. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Let's just be clear. I was a boy at that point. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna let you clear that uh -huh. <laughs> from that. <laughs> so, um, they record. She gives her sex story, and she doesn't. She seems like a, you know, she's a model in real life. This actress, so I never for once believed that she would be shy about it. She gave it. He, however, she turns the camera on him, and she asks him his sex story. Mm -hmm. And he doesn't have anything to say. He's like, I haven't done anything like that, like you. Oh, I'm on, so kind of sad. Oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. Tell us. Tell us. Don't be shy. And yeah, and so he creates this story about being business and a party and Christmas party or whatever. Yeah, and that was an odd story. None of it makes, and none of it even matters. I mean, well, we'll talk about the, the whole point of the sex story is that she's getting bored, and so she gets him aroused, and then he tells about the story. Do you think that, that she did that to get him in the mood? I think so. Yeah. Huh. Okay, well, it was weird, because it was like, I now that you say that, I can see that. I wouldn't say she's a nasty hoe by any means, and she was trying to, but I would say she was feeling a little frisky, and she let her guard down, and he was very charming, and very cute, and flirtatious. Oh, boy, did he play it. He was telling, he told his story, mm -hmm. and then at one point, he gets to the hot, he's like, oh, the girl took off her panties and put it in the glove box, and he stops, because he's like, oh, no, that's, and she's like, oh, you're blushing, and he says to her, that's not the only thing that's happening involuntarily. Oh, okay. And she like looks at him, and she gives him that look, and he turns around to, turns his back to her, cause and she's like, oh, so you're aroused. And that's when like, I don't know if the pheromones kicked in, if there was a little signal that got in her brain, she was like, hmm, I'm gonna hop on that. Yeah, it. it was on after that. They, uh, he still played this cute little boy next door type. Very shy. Like, oh, I have another confession. I just want to kiss you right now. I'm like, oh, come on. You are the biggest. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes over. Why? Why, Why did you? Why? What? Why did... Why, did you think... Why did you think that? Is it because he was using your tricks? No, I think he didn't. <laughs> I think he didn't have swagger. He was oh. a little pussy and was like, ah. Oh. 
I'm not going to... Should I kiss you? I need a written invitation. I guess in today's day and age, hell, you I should, need, No, you, you should check. You to last need to get sure. that invitation written, notarized, sealed, signed, delivered, sent to the freaking Secretary of State, make sure they know there's going to be some fornication involved, and send it back. And here on Booze Reviews, we advocate for consent. <laughs> Just to make Did that he clear. get consent? Oh, he got consent because... He went in and kissed her, and she just pushed him back a little bit, slid her hand down his pants, felt up his member and junk and all of that, and was like, oh, that's, that's good enough. I'm offended. <laughs> right, you need an adult. You <laughs> usually are the dirty old adult. Um, yep. So she felt it, and she said, yeah, that'll work. And they get it on. Apparently she was sizing him up. And do they get it on? It's pretty hot sexy. <laughs> Woo! He was laying more pipe than the Super Mario Brothers. Oh lord, Donkey Kong climbing up on that. Yeah. <laughs> he, like... They, yeah. Did Nate Jonas get some of that? I didn't watch, I only watched his scenes. I don't know. I think. No, no. Oh, he was Brandon didn't even watch the series. He's like, he was like, this guy Nick Jonas was in it. I just fast forwarded. And I heard about the sex scene, so I, I they found him on YouTube. They were the ones. He was straight. Uh, this guy was straight. Guy was straight, uh -huh. and Nick Jonas was doing something uh -huh. else. But uh -huh. like a story, a man can dream. Right. But anyway, so they do that, and that's after this scene is when the shit really starts kicking off. What happens? Uh, he, like, confesses love to her, that he's, like... He's whipped, he's smitten. That's why he's even more of a walking vagina, because he's, like... He's, like, ah, oh, I'm in love with you now. I'm, like, girl, have you never got a piece in your life that you are... One little taste, and you're, like, a well, okay. puppy dog coming back for Here, more. I, I'll... There's a quick reason why I think they put made it like that, because earlier, we kind of skipped over it. We're trying to skip over some parts, because we assume... People have seen it if you're listening to you're this. You're not doing a very good job of skipping that we're trying right, to. Right, but going. the more I think about it, the more the, the deeper and more. And this is what re reviews are about. Um, earlier, they kind of say, he asked her, okay, well, since this was Valentine's, did you have any plans? And she tells him that she was going to, that she didn't really have any plans. Like she was going to meet someone who probably didn't know she was coming and didn't, wouldn't care if she was there. Yeah. So she doesn't reveal that she was going to meet this ex or this romantic person and he says he doesn't have anyone and he's like well i just focus on my work and that's kind of a loser thing and so i think that was a way to let her guard down too yeah. but so you know him thinking oh we just kind of hooked up we had a good time you know maybe some after we get out of this elevator maybe we can yeah get together locked in this box but we're still a million miles apart i'm an extremely private person you don't even know me yeah yeah and what did she think about that I don't even remember. I didn't even think it was that important. Apparently, she she could have said she was had a boyfriend and he would have left her alone. Well, I'm, I'm more at, okay. I'm more asking when he falls in love because of thinking that they're both single. What she says to him, this was just sex. Oh, yeah, like yeah. I, that's when she reveals that he had that she has a man, and she's like, I'm planning to get back with fuck yeah. you. That's why I knew she was the one turning on the love making music first because. She was like, she knows the difference. She was like, we're stuck in an elevator. You kind of hot. We've been, you've been flirting. We've been flirting. Let's do this thing. Mm -hmm. And then she's like, it, it, it got weird. But any girl or guy really anyway, in the right mind would be like, if you have some kind of casual sex up, yeah. because of the situation, obviously, because they wouldn't have had any sex if that situation wouldn't have went down. And then the other person's like, I want to be with you. I'm in love with you. Yeah, that's weird. I'm like, fool, you just met me yesterday in this damn elevator. Is it like that for us? No, there's no love. <laughs> He's joking, folks. <laughs> <laughs> we, wouldn't be doing, we wouldn't be doing this show. It yeah, was just the way I'm there. Thank you, sir. Ah, I was gone. Anyway. And then she is like, yeah, this is not going to work. I'm in love with my ex and I'm going to see him. And this is just casual passing. And he goes ape shit. And he's like, uh, uh. That's when, that's when we get to the part. That's why this is in Into the Dark. He, but we can't tell you because we got to go because this is a spoiler. Whatever. He flips his shit. That's when he, like, he says. 
we'll be fine because we're honest with each other. And that's when he like flips his phone around to show that he's he's like, I've been watching you. This is you coming in the office at nine o'clock. This is when you leave at seven o'clock. You light up the office. You're my heart. You're my world. This is the PP cam I installed in the toilet. <laughs> we like to use. <laughs> right? I mean, pretty much everything and, but that. And the gag is, he. He says to her, she like starts to freak out and he's like, but you can go if you want to. And he puts the key to the elevator in the elevator, turns it on, like revealing that he's the one that made it stop. Yeah. And here's where she screws up the first time. <laughs> yes. Well, it's a horror movie. This heifer, come, she comes out and she gets pissed, obviously. I mean, you would get, if, if you see that this dude has set you up and he is a crazy stalker. And he puts the key in the elevator. I would let it happen. Let the elevator get to a floor. Tell him you need to think about it or whatever. Do do something. But don't start screaming at him and be like, I'm going to send you to jail. You need to rot in jail for this stuff. I'm going to... Yeah. I'm like, girl, you ain't even out of this elevator yet. Of course yeah. he's not going to... That was the dumbest move she made. And immediately, burnt, he pulls it out and is like, no, I don't want to... I don't want to go back to jail. Yeah. Yeah, that that was said, too. Okay, so now you know you're a stalker, you're a creep, and a criminal. Right, all the, of them. The list is starting to pile up on you. So, then he, like, then he, like, really flips his shit because he doesn't want to go back there. And so he, like, tackles her and, like, like lunges at her. But then, good for her, she ends up, like, smacking him in the fucking face with one oh, of her shoes. Oh, man. She destroyed him. That was, a, that, was a, that was graphic. We had to go back and watch it twice, and that was just even graphic the second time. That's where they got, like, the, po the poster for this. It's, like, the blood hand yeah. splattered on the elevator. Oh, my gosh. She gashed his cheek has like temple open everything it's with nose. a six inch stiletto girl that's like ooh, she did it um but then but of course they're still trapped in the elevator so where can she go what can she do like she, she didn't kill him with that blow so he's eventually gonna get up and so he he does get up and he like wrestles her to the ground and you know being a fairly built guy and he overpowers her and so then you get the classic sort of stalker kidnapper things yeah we know. get a cat and mouse uh we get some stuff going on. Uh, you know, in, in the movie, without recapping the whole movie, I think we can we can skip ahead. Yeah, this part we, definitely. There's a lot of interesting stuff that's going on that actually makes it more of a, a thriller. Like, you want to you wanna see what's going on. The second stupid thing she does, she finally gets on his shoulders and they bash out the top, which I'm like, all right, well... I guess they thought of it earlier, but they couldn't. They couldn't figure it out. Earlier. Which makes sense because human nature, the human psyche, like. Also, he knowing what we know, he wasn't really trying. Well, he's not trying, and he was making her feel comfortable, so she's not into desperation mode yet. Yeah. And you know, human behavior suggests that you're not going to want to destroy something unless you're really starting to get desperate, right? So you're in this elevator, right? As it gets close to the end and the unravel comes and she finds out that he's a stalker, then they're like just destroying everything and there's these lights that go around with the case on them. Yeah. And she just starts ripping those out, which creates a step that helps them elevate themselves to the top of the elevator to destroy it, right? So desperation level is increasing and so the destruction is starting to come because they really are desperate to get out of there. So they get up out of there and he's like, hoist her up and whatever well she says she said this is when she what you called her stupid for before yeah. this is where she was smart this time because at first he says you lift me up and she says well you're too big i can't lift you you have to lift me and and he's like but you'll run away she's like no no no. i promise i promise I'm gonna yeah stay. yeah yeah but her smart lived was for about 30 seconds <laughs> well i'm trying to and give her something then, yeah okay i'll give her 30 Jennifer, seconds i'm trying to give you something girl and then she gets up there he lifts her up there and instead of just being like, okay, I'll go get some help <laughs> yes, and yes. run straight to the police, yes. she's like, <laughs> I'm going to leave you here to rot. And then goes running her mouth again before she's out of danger. Oh, I guess yeah. that's what they have to make that Ladies. a suspense thriller. Ladies, don't talk shit before you're out. 
I or wonder, anyone really. No, I wonder just, if like, this Martinez girl's an actress was like, I can't do that. That is the stupidest thing. <laughs> no one that's and has an ounce of intelligence would ever do that in their life. She she did it. She had so. to. Yeah, she, she had, had to. to. It. So she does get up there. She does say, "Well, fuck you." This like obviously causes a panic in him that she's gonna run away and tell on him. So she is up there in the elevator shaft. She's climbing. The, the yeah. ladder and then his ass all of a sudden like that finds a solution I'm like okay you just got the shit kicked out of you mm-hmm. you've lost a lot of blood you've got a huge gash in your head you've you got your nose had broken sex with her. you had sex yeah. your, your, your fluids are low you're feeling depleted the wine dried you out it's been two days <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying there was like that much water in a bottle when they got in and he gave it to her so it's like he is drained. but then all of a sudden he turns into Superman he's like let me tie all these things together and then fight or fly thro- the please and then throw yeah, I guess and then <laughs> throw it up there and, and magically get it and, 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 and these fabrics aren't going to tear these fabrics aren't going to tear I'm going to put all my weight on it and just pull myself up yeah. and, and he magically gets up and then he climbs up it like he's freaking Speedy Gonzalez on the ladder there Arriba, right. arriba. Arriba, arriba. They were going arriba, arriba. And then she, of course, like a slow, oh, I'm so nervous I'm going to fall. So she's tre- trepidation <laughs> stepping well, on the It's little. a horror movie. What do you want? Yeah. It, to me, it didn't build it's suspense, thriller. though. That's the point of it. It was supposed to build suspense. Be like, oh, he's catching on you, girl. I'm just sitting there cussing at the TV going, get your stupid at move. Oh, girl. And then what happens? He gets her, grabs her, and they fall back through, and they're sat there unconscious on the floor of the elevator again because they just fell three stories. Through the, through the ceiling of the through elevator. Through the ceiling of the elevator. Um, yeah, and so you, I don't know, that might have seemed like a good place to wrap up, but no, there's still more movie left. Oh, no, no, no. Now they got to get the one person. Tell me why nobody came in the four-day weekend. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because okay. apparently you know something I don't know. So he says to her, at some point, when after he's revealed himself, he says, my name's not Guy. He, he says, I'm actually a security guard here, and that's how I have the key to the elevator. That's how I knew how to, where you were, your schedule. And she, like, gets this freaked out look, and he takes it upon himself to villain monologue and says, oh yeah, Charlie wanted to spend time with his girlfriend, so no, I took no, no, his no. shit. Yeah, I remember that. I get that. So he, he cleared up why the security guards were there. Because he was supposed to be on duty. You were asking why there wasn't someone there to monitor because he was on no, duty. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm asking. I'm asking how many hundreds of people work in that building? How many businessmen work there? Well, in 60 floors, probably over a thousand. Well, I mean, it is the weekend, it is Valentine's Day, and it's a movie, so we're supposed to suspend some sort of... That is that is the part of disbelief that I'm like, I could not, like, there should be people coming and going and whatever. I and mean, maybe honest, that's... honestly, out of everything in this movie, I think that's the easiest part to no, believe. For me, for me, that's like, <laughs> I'm going... They they were there, like, her flight was at, like, 9 o'clock, so they're on Thursday, right before a long weekend, and we're less to believe... And it was a four-day weekend. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, President's Day. I think they... Not a four-day weekend. I think they just met you get Monday, where you normally would I mean, a normal work weekend is, week is Monday through Friday. Right. And they so made a big Saturday, point Sunday. about the four-day weekend because it happens to be Valentine's Day and President's Day falls on the same weekend. I think they just met long. Before. Well, what, regardless, her flight's at 9 o'clock or something in the evening, and she's like yeah. going to the airport, so it's like, what, 7 o'clock, 6.30, you go to the airport... And like, all right, that's normal working hours. And here's this 60 some floor building and everyone's gone. Nobody's there. Nobody's working late to get work done for the three day weekend. It's like, what country are we in? Not America, not my capitalist America. I know, well, you're the workaholic and I'm not. So clearly you're the one that's saying, well, shit, I would have been in there doing at least nine more reports. And all the people that are gonna work in a skyscraper 60 floor building, they're going to be in there, that's, too. That's true. Someone would have been a workaholic. Someone would have been working on something for the weekend. You know, there are, not everyone has someone for Valentine's Day. Not everyone cares about Valentine's Day. This is not Rocco's Modern Life conglomerate, I think. Oh, shout out to that. That's an old school. I didn't know you had it in you. No, apparently. Isn't that a big building? And, like, there's one guy that works in there? There, there is. <laughs> there is. Uh, I forget the name of it, but... 
there is it a conglomerate or something? Yeah. Conglomo something yeah. in Rocco. That's okay. it. Apparently only one guy works in there and he was already gone for the weekend, so they, they did. Well, anyway, I kind of <laughs> believe, whatever, you kind of believe that this, no one would be working on the weekend, especially on a Sunday. Because okay. by this time it's Sunday. Because Valentine's Day was Saturday. She yeah. even says on the phone at some point, it is Sunday the 15th. So yes. she's already missed Valentine's Day. Um, so there is no one in there. And the reason why there's no security guards is because he went around and he asked for everybody's shift. Yes. And everyone with the long weekend, the Monday off, with Valentine's Day, everyone was like, oh, sure, man, take it. Take yeah, so and so Johnny Appleseed got a new girlfriend and he wants to kick it with her. Yeah. Uh, in comes Johnny, or whatever his name is. Yeah, that was weird. Johnny and comes he's, in. And he's his... bringing Johnny comes marching home. He's bringing his prostitute slash yeah. new girlfriend. You you got mad at me. I, I literally, when we watched it, even the first time, said, why is he bringing a hooker to work? I'm like, dude, that's his new girlfriend. He just said that like 10 minutes before in the movie. She was wearing go-go boots, a mini dress. She's and... a new girlfriend. She wants And a fur to... coat? Girl, if that she, is not the hooker, I work on well, Santa Monica and La Cienega she outfit. Tried, she, she tried to say something to him, apparently. Maybe he didn't lay the pipe the first date like old Deacons would have done in the elevator. Maybe. Maybe she was like, either this guy's gay or dumb, so I'm going to dress it up and look like a hooker the next time. <laughs> Whatever, she sure did. She did. And um, apparently they was coming to get it on because the whole premise is they come in and he just wants to show her the roof. Uh -huh. Yeah, he tries. Uh -huh. He brings his girlfriend. One of the other security guards brings his girlfriend in. They come in, and he is looking around. He he knows that guy who's now revealed his name to be John. Yeah, yeah, Deacons. Yeah, John Deacons. He he's calling John's cell phone. It's like, hey, John, you're supposed to be here. Where you at? And so he goes. He leaves the girlfriend in the lobby and goes looking for them. And um. And he finds them. We back to plot summary. He sees yeah. them on the thing, and they and they're like, "We're trapped." And he comes down. He's like, "Oh my God, stay there, stay there. I gotta help them out of the elevator." Right. And the prostitute drank too much. She's too tired, so she's like, "Oh, I can't stay away." <laughs> and then she sleeps through the whole thing. I'm like, "Girl, okay. really?" Okay. Well, spoiler: he murders Johnny. Yeah. Throws him out. He puts on a poor bastard's uniform. He gets ready to abduct. Jennifer. Actually, that was the creepiest that he looked in the whole scene. Like, I didn't think he was very creepy at all. As a stalker, I knew he was the guy. Like, in the very beginning, like, didn't you know if you saw the movie? Like, I hope you did by this point. Otherwise, you're not going to watch it because now you already know the whole movie. But didn't you think that he was the creeper that set it up? No. I did. From from almost the very beginning when he was in there and the, and the thing stopped, I knew they were going to get stuck in the elevator before the elevator stopped. And I knew as soon as it did, I'm like, oh, he's guilty as hell. He did it. Yeah, this was a very more down to earth thing. Cause I've seen, like I, we said earlier, you haven't seen the other ones. Yeah. The other ones are very trippy. Like they're very cerebral. They're very yeah. existential. They so have I, a lot more levels of people playing. Really, there's only the two characters in for the, the whole most thing. Part, yeah. And the, the other security guard and his prostitute girlfriend. That's it. I mean, except maybe a couple, like, whatever, but... Yeah. Yeah, so maybe that's why I didn't think it was him, because I thought there was going to be something more, like, supernatural or something freaky going yeah. on. No, I was... No. I'm pretty basic. I'm, like, down to it. <laughs> well, you um, clocked it. I'll give you your credit. You clocked him. Well, and then I didn't think he looked creepy the whole time. I didn't think, like... I'm like, oh, I like what they're doing. Like, they don't want him to look creepy, because they're like, why would he pick a really nice-looking guy like this? Mm -hmm. And then he's saying things like... Oh, I'm the security guard now, and it's the loneliest job, and I'm so lonely, and everybody walks by yeah. and doesn't pay attention to me. Oh. And Brandon's like, girl, you look like that. You are getting... That was what I had a problem with. He was hot. You're like, you getting it. And 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 old Samantha, whatever her face is, uh, Martina's girl. Jennifer. Jennifer. <laughs> so is cool. like, is like, I love it. She's like, you got, you must be going on a Valentine's Day date. You got a boyfriend? Yeah, oh, girlfriend. We, yeah, we, we wanted to. We didn't even mention that. We skipped all over that. You're yes. too busy talking about the plot. You're not even talking about the, That was funny when she said I mean, that, though. This is a review. We kind of have to talk about the plot in order to review it. <laughs> Brandon was happy that she called him out for having a boyfriend first. She said, know? she asked about his boyfriend first, and I lived. We're like, yeah, you look gay as hell. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He did, but he looked good. Nah, you know, I don't say he looked gay, but he, he could be. We would take him for our team. Anyone team. could be these days. Anyone could be. We'll take him. So, but yeah, you thought he looked creepy because so, he put on the uniform, but no, he's all bloody. The creepiest part oh, in the whole that? movie, like the only time where I was really genuinely like, 
Oh, he's a villain. He's he's like malintent. Like he is malintent. weirdo. Is when the girl woke up from her little drunken daydream haze, and she was like, "Where's Johnny?" His name's not Johnny. I don't even know what his name is. Anyway, but she's like, she's like, "Where is he? We were supposed to see the roof together." And he's like, and he and he is like deleting all the files of the camera, you know, like to cover his evidence, cover his tracks, and he doesn't know she's there. And she comes up and says something, and he's like a startled. And he looks up, and he's got his broken nose, and he's been like washed his face, but he's still like gashed and stuff. And he's like so nervous, and you can tell like, oh, that was a really good scene because it's like, oh, there's a psycho in those eyes, and he is like, he's gonna do anything he can because all of a sudden you're an innocent bystander. Yeah. You shouldn't have said shit because no. I and, know. And then he goes, what did he say? He left. Or he, what well, he dipped and he said, he have a good night. And he looked like he was going to let her go. Yeah. And unlike Jennifer, who was like, I'm going to call the cops. And this girl, the hooker girlfriend, was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and yeah. she turns to leave. She was not a white woman. <laughs> no, she was not. A white woman would have been like asking all kinds of questions and up in there interrogating them. But unfortunately, even though she was smart enough to say, okay, I'm going to walk away, he still gets her. He still yeah, gets and then her. there's that scene where it's like, she feels the light hit her back and the back of the head and she turns around and he's got that flashlight in her face like running after. Yeah. That was kind of cool. That was the most suspenseful moment in the movie, I think, for me at least. Yeah. Because he did, because he looked so creepy. It was the first time he looked like a, a, a killer or like a psychopath. Well, yeah, because I don't, yeah. But anyway, so that happens. He puts Johnny and the hooker's body in the elevator. So maybe if the police call me, they, it was all of them. And no, he was just a stupid criminal. He didn't think anything clearly through. I'll give him credit. He was trying. He was trying some things. I guess. I mean, he cleaned up. He mopped the floor and and cleaned up. We got to see his ass sink. again. There you go. This he changed. Little ass. And then he threw them down the elevator shaft and threw his bloody clothes that he was wearing oh, down the yeah, elevator oh, shaft because yeah. he DNA exists. Right. I'm like. <laughs> and 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 I'm trying to figure out what's he doing. Is he trying to get to Mexico before anybody knows he's gone? Yeah, that's and then all of a yeah. sudden we fast forward. He's thirty seconds later. He's in the parking garage. Oh, this moves on. This moves to the alley. Th throwing Wait. it in the trunk, and then he's backing up some alley before we see it. And um, and Jennifer, he's, Jennifer's, in the, Jennifer's trunk. in the trunk, and he's pouring gasoline in the dumpster in the back alley. One way in, one way out. Back all the way down the alley in his old beater, and then he talks to her. He gets down. Ta -ta 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 -ta. I'm so sorry it happened like this. Right? What do you think of the ending? <laughs> okay. So apparently, I I don't remember falling asleep the first time, but apparently I did, and I didn't remember the ending until we went That's back to before. look at our notes. You'll find that it might be a common thread on this show that I don't know what the ending is because I fell asleep. Um, but he, the ending, seeing it fresh for the first time right before this, I thought was really, I thought it was good. I felt like they were just trying to, okay, shit, how do we, how do we wrap this up real quick? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that could have, it could have gone on a little bit more and been more dramatic, but, um. So she, he opens the trunk. His plan is, he says to her, you know, Jennifer, maybe in another life we could have been together, but since the way this happened, yeah, I can't she have knows that. he's going to kill her. Yeah. And he opens the trunk, but she's already dead. And she's got her eyes open and her mouth is open and her body, she's not moving, she's not breathing. He takes his flashlight and pokes her face and moves her face and it comes back to that dead face. Mm -hmm. And um, he's like, well, shit. And so he goes and throws her purse and her belongings in the dumpster filled with gasoline. And then all of a sudden she jumps out of the trunk and... Surprise, bitch! Tell her back! That was cold Breaks his nose a third time with, uh, yeah, that was with a the gas can. That was a running gag. She broke his... <laughs> I didn't think there could be a running gag in right. a thriller, but... Yeah, if she... he would have lived to tell, his nose would have looked like a Z. <laughs> And so, uh, and, and I thought it was nice because she, she hit, whacks him with the gas can. He's on the ground whining like a bitch again. And she jumps in the car and the, the car's on and she gasses it up and she moves down the alley and she's gone. Now, mm -hmm. she's either brave or stupid because if that was me and I was escaping, mm -hmm. I would have never went back. I would have been like, 
went to the police right away. So she gets to the end of the alley and she yeah. smells smoke and she looks over in the car ashtray and there's the cigar. He had a cigar. Remember the cigar from his gift to his client? Ooh, callback. Mm-hmm. He has a cigar. It's smoking. And she's like, uh-huh. I got you. He was going to burn me alive. Whatever. So that pisses her off. And so she gets really brave then. And he gets up and he's walking after her like a... You know, like when you just got your nose broke a third time. <laughs> and <laughs> you see them white lights come on, the break, the backup lights, right? And all of a sudden, she just slams on the gas and is coming back that alley. And he can't do anything but jump in the dumpster because the alley's about as wide as the dumpster is only. He picked the one alley in Los Angeles right? that had one way in and one way out Maybe with a dumpster did. at the end of it. Maybe he, that was his master plan. He thought that would be... Do you think he knew? No, I think... Hell, was? no. Oh, no, I don't know. So. <laughs> but I also think he would have had to drive around for four hours trying to find out. <laughs> exactly. Be, you know? So, <laughs> so good storytelling again. Screen writing. Are like it's got to be an alley, you know? Right. So none of this makes sense if it right. It There's a lot of stuff that doesn't make sense that she wouldn't have said. <laughs> like, so but, yeah. So to, I mean, so she, she she obviously smashes into the dumpster right as he's dived inside, and it goes back as far as it goes and smashes up against the the stone cement wall that's mm-hmm. behind it, and then he's like what do you call it, like impaled sort of by like something inside the dumpster. Yeah, he's trapped. And he looks awful like his face. The makeup was great in this last scene, I thought. Yeah. It was like the really white eyelids and like just the like dusty, like sick looking face and he looked like death. Yeah. And, um, and she is just like looking at him and they have this moment and it's like, I won, I won. She's like, Fuck And then on top of it, she's like, puff, puff, Bill Clinton threw that thing right in the dumpster. Ablaze. She set his ass ablaze. Yes, she did. Now here's the issue. Uh huh. Now she just committed. Now you gonna call that self defense? Yes. That's still self defense. She he raped her. Well, no. Does I, she have any proof of anything anymore? I can't say that. I wouldn't use the R word on that. Yeah. See what we just talked about consent, and he's like, all of a sudden, I know he because she him. she gave she started it. So yeah. he didn't do that. That that letter did come back notarized, and we still calling it rape. <laughs> How you like that? I. Uh, I mean, she, that's how she felt when she called it out. But if we're telling the truth, she invited him in. But um, she, uh, but, but she, there's no like evidence she anymore. There's no evidence. Like, remember the, 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 the cell phone and he like destroys it that she was making her video? There doesn't, on? I guess there, I guess there doesn't need to, to be any evidence. She, he was going to kill her. Right. So she felt like the only thing I can do. So who knows him. that? Is that going to be uh, but like he permissible was... in a court of law when they're like, you burn this man alive in the dumpster. She's going to be like, it was self-defense. There's no he, video. Oh my God. He is here right now trying to work to, to work on her defense case. <laughs> this woman has been... I'm just saying, she's like, get, that she, was the dumbest thing to go back and do. Like, she should have, he was almost dead anyway. She should have left his butt there and been like, Joshua, I'm just going to remind you, this is a movie. This is not, I understand in real <laughs> life there may have been a court case. We're not concerned with, are we going to watch down to up the court case? <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to start writing that one. <laughs> I mean, no I like one, what other, think about no other movie or anything where you get revenge <laughs> on the killer, you worried about the court case. Jennifer has to defend herself. Right. <laughs> I mean, what? But I'm saying, that's the thing I always think of when I watch movies like this. And it's like at the end of the story, <laughs> we know as an audience, we went on a journey with them. Right. We saw all the little psychological and behavioral nuances yes. that the screenwriters wrote into it, that the actors delivered beautifully. Absolutely. We saw like this transformation. We saw this change of character. We saw the desperation. We saw the murders of the two people. Yeah. And we saw it all at the hand of this guy. Yeah. Nobody else knows us. There's no elevator video footage surveillance. There's no cell phone video still to prove anything. So how her cell you... phone? No, he's he not it. it. But there are there are forensic people that can get it. I sure hope so for her benefit. I, I think Jennifer's gonna be okay, y'all. I think Jennifer will be just <laughs> fine. I think people will say, t- "Hey, 
there are people murdered in this elevator. Or she doesn't know anyone's murdered in the elevator. She's like, I was trapped in this elevator with this guy who attempted to kill me. And they're going to go find some body. And oh, here's, got it, got it. Okay. By your own logic. Because you were worried about the blood he threw in the elevator. Yeah. She's going to go in and is like, go look at those bodies. His blood's going to be in there. Because we were in that elevator. Of course it is. But how is that saying? That's the forensic evidence. She's not the mastermind that wanted to kill him for whatever reason. Yeah. Let's wrap this up. What overall? What, how what, did... what would prevent me from going out and like <laughs> you? You know, you turn on me and want to kill me, and you got me in an elevator, whatever. Mm -hmm. I I end up winning and burning your ass alive in a dumpster. Okay, right method. What what logic is it for anybody in the world to believe that I was doing it out of self defense? Because when you tell people, hey, I was trapped in the elevator with him. He tried to kill me. Go back to that elevator and look what was down there. And they're going to say, oh, you tried to kill him. No! <laughs> I'm demanding we wrap this up because I will not be defense counsel for Jennifer while you be the prosecution. All right, all right. So okay, good. you were the one. You like law. That leaves, a, that leaves a thought, though. Think about that. Think about that if you want, people. But getting back and wrapping this up, what did you think about the movie as a whole? I liked it. It was good. It was like <laughs> I, I said, it was basic enough for uh, someone like me to be like, <laughs> "He did it. He's the one. He's guilty." And you're thinking of all these other like conspiracy. But you're the things. one trying to convict Jennifer. <laughs> I'm just saying, girl, you didn't have any evidence that says that he was trying to kill you. So there's no case. <laughs> For uh, I'm defending myself, so I'm gonna brutally murder him, and then on top of after killing him, burn his ass, burn his body to a crisp. Okay, so I thought it was a great <laughs> movie. I I was going into it thinking it was gonna be like Devil. It wasn't like that. I'm glad they made it more down to earth. Um, seeing how some of the other episodes in the anthology series were a little more spooky, uh, sci-fi, whatever. And I thought the two actors did had good chemistry since they worked together. They were great, actually. Yeah, they I like great. And in, in horror movies and suspense thriller movies, you always see actors that be like, "Oh my god!" Such bad. Actors. And I'm like, yeah. And I actually liked. I believed all of the situations they were in. I was never like, oh, another bad acting. Hmm. So it was good. So it was good. Two, so, two. Oh, oh, we're giving it a two. So if you have seen it, let us know what you have thought about the movie if you yeah. haven't seen it you're listening to this first definitely go check it out it's on hulu yep. it's the into the dark series this is the february episode down check out all the other episodes and if you like what you heard from us you know what you can do subscribe to our channel subscribe 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 subscribe, subscribe. Can we have a channel well i mean we're yeah okay. yeah right there right there i mean the, He's the techie one. I don't on, know. I mean, if we're if you're listening to this on the audio version, I don't know what that's gonna do for you. But if you're watching the video, yeah, right there, right there. We'll have all our links, um, all our stuff, and we look forward to bringing some other reviews. Uh, other than Moosey, we did Rent Live. This was a movie. We're looking for where we we're gonna do on Friday. Yes. Uh, what are we doing on Friday? Hello. Oh, we're going to see Hello. Hello. Dolly. Well, Dolly. Hello. Dolly. So that'll be our first theater review. So if you're into that, definitely stay tuned for that and check us out. Um, other than that, thank you so much for joining us on Boobs Reviews. My funny Valentine. Sweet. Call me back.